If you guys have ever wanted to remove someone from the background of a photo, today is the episode for you. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we got a really cool episode. If you guys have ever had trouble with someone photo bombing you or you're taking uh, vacation photos and there's some guy in the background picking his nose or something like that and you had maybe had some complex pat patterns in the background made it kind of difficult to remove those people, this is a perfect episode on how to do that stuff. We've got some great tips and tricks so we're going to come at you. Let's go ahead and get started because we've got a ton to do. This image is by Brian who won our contest this past week. If you guys want to win a contest, just submit. Every single Monday we have a new contest and the theme for this week is motion blur or using a slow shutter speed. All right, so here is our subject. And what we're going to do, we're basically going to get rid of everyone here in the background. We're going to get rid of them and um, it's going to be like basically a really good task in how to like figure out how to delete things out but uh, keeping your patterns uh, from like looking really weird because we do have uh, some brick patterns back here. So I'm going to create a new layer. We're going to be using a clone stamp tool for a lot of today. So our clone stamp tool, let's go ahead and make like a relatively hard edge brush, something right about that. Now I'm going to sample this area right over here. We're going to start it off by getting rid of um, this person right here on the right. Now I'm going to sample an area and start painting around. There we go. And looks pretty decent. Let me, that actually worked out better than I thought it was going to be. I'm trying to show you one of the things that is, um, it can be an, like something relatively hard to deal with. And that's when you are just clone stamping there, you'll sample somewhere you're going to get it to where like these patterns don't really repeat. This is, you know, brick that does not line up with the other brick. There's a really cool thing you can do to make sure that you can actually see what you're about to do. If you go to window and then down here to clone source, you can actually click on this show overlay. So if I hold down the alter option key, sample right here, and now it's going to actually show me the overlay of what it's going to look like when I start to paint in. So as I paint in right here, we can see now everything actually is lined up just where we wanted it and we're good to go. Maybe not perfect, but we could just try it again. Now, if you don't want to keep the show overlay, this is usually checked by default when you install Photoshop. I uncheck it because I don't always need it. Sometimes it just gets in the way. If you want to just have it on temporarily, what you should do is hold down the Alt, Alt, <laughs> the Alt or the Option key as well as the Shift key. And that's going to let you have that little uh, preview there even if you don't have that option checked. So let's go ahead and start getting rid of this person. Now I'm not necessarily worried about stopping at our bodybuilder. Um, I, I do want to actually like, you know, paint over just a little bit. The reason being is if you tend to stop at the edge of someone, it get, just gets a little bit weird. Like it, it's going to look like, you know, you went up to the edge and then just stopped. So I recommend going past your subject and then just using a layer mask to mask it out. We're going to do that. So we're going to hold alt or app option. We're just going to sample here and I'm going to start painting and right about there. And you can do this in a few different steps. Don't feel like you have to do this all at the exact same time using just one big patch. Uh, it generally does help if you can cover a large area without having to resample. You're just going to get something that just is a little bit more fluid. But if you feel like you're running into an area where you do need to like resample, like here the pattern is not really uh, lining up anymore. So I'm going to resample over here, Alt or Option to do that. And then we're just going to start painting in right over there and our pattern's gonna line up a little bit better. There we go, looking good. Now you are gonna get some repeating patterns, like this thing is the same thing as that. I would just suggest like sampling somewhere else and then painting in that area like just a little bit, enough to like cover up the pattern, make it look like it's something else. Um, you know, this thing is the same thing as that. Sample right over here and then just paint in something that's not as like descript. That's what I would recommend doing for like getting rid of that sort of thing. Um, it's, you know, you are clone stamping here. So <laughs> the definition of the clone stamp tool is to copy something from what was over there and put it in another place. So like, you know, <laughs> by definition using this tool, that is exactly what you're going to be doing. All right, so we got rid of a person already using that really cool technique. Now, how much time you spend on this is totally up to you, whether you've got the, um, whether you've got it to be like, you know, the. Um, pattern perfect or you know just pretty good you can go in here and do some touch-up work and things like that I generally work to like you know you don't want to basically work spend like three hours on this sort of thing if it's not you know if it if 20 minutes gets you to 90 percent and three hours gets you to 100 percent usually it's a better option to spend that 20 minutes unless it's an image for a client and they're paying you big bucks and it's worth spending the time then go ahead and spend the extra time 
All right, we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna get rid of this guy. And again, I'm using the same technique. So sample right there. And I'm just gonna start painting in right over here. There we go. And we don't have a whole lot of area right over here. We can see we're gonna to start to run into, you know, this guy's shadow and things like that. So if you wanna sample again over here, you can do so. Just keep in mind that it might be like a little bit different. It might be a little bit lighter. It might be a little bit darker. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. It might not look exactly the same. And if you do need to make some adjustments, we're going to show you how to do that after all of our clone stamping has been done. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can take care of this lady. And I'm just going to create new layers for these things just in case I like don't like something. I can just delete the layer and I don't have to like worry about finding it or something like that. So I just like creating a bunch of layers. It's, uh, it's kind of my way of, instead of using like undo, for the most part, I just use a bunch of layers. All right, and let's do that again. There we are. Just making sure they also line up. Now, the other reason I would like to use quite a few layers when I'm doing this sort of thing is if by chance you did, you know, you thought something was lined up but it wasn't lined up perfectly, you can always use your move tool and you can actually move the layer that you're on. So. This is, you know, just another way to make things line up a little bit better. If you had like sampled a couple different sources and then you moved your, use your move tool, it wouldn't work the same. So if you do want to keep sampling and painting like what I'm going to do over here, um, this is just a, a time when you don't really want to use your move tool. There we go. And kind of bring this in the bottom there. And we are going to get some of these, you know, some of these elements are going to repeat, but we're going to show you how to take care of those as well. OK, and now let's sample from the right side. And we'll bring this in. We're going to cover this guy over here. Sorry, photographer. I'm one of you. We're kin. <laughs> I look like that when I take pictures, too. It's OK. All right. His head is starting to show up again. So let's sample right over here now and just continue to paint in right over there. Oh, that doesn't really line up, does it? So we'll sample right over there and then make sure we're lining up. OK, looking good. And let's see, we have an option here. Because this area is lighter, this area is a little bit darker. I'm just going to sample here, which is like somewhere in between the light and the dark, and uh, hope that it looks good. If it doesn't, you could just hit undo or you know, delete it and start over again. But I think we're doing pretty well here. All right, and my goal is to cover as much area as I possibly can without having to like lift up this and you know clone stamp again. All right, we can see this doesn't look exactly like it's not blending in that well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, select this area here. I'm going to still do the same thing, but I'm going to hold down Shift and hit the number 2, which is going to bring our flow down to about 20%. And now I'm still going to paint in. There we go, just like that. But I'm not going to be painting as much now. So it's a little bit softer, and it's just going to help everything kind of like blend in together. So the lights and darks are just going to kind of blend in a little bit better. We're going to do the same thing over here. So let's sample right over there. I want to make sure that this does, you know, line up with everything. There we go. And start to just kind of blend that in as well. So we can see the pattern is staying the same, because I am lining up the pattern here. There we go. But like the light or the dark areas, it's just kind of like blending in just a little bit better. OK, and let's do the same thing from the left to the right there. Sample there. And then paint there. Just make sure your pattern does line up, or else things are going to get all soft and mucky and not really look that good. All right, let's sample here. You know what? I'm just going to take this area here, because we have such a large area, such a large sample size there that I think it's just going to be quite a bit easier and give us a better result, rather than trying to piecemeal something together back here on the other side. All right, let's sample over here. And then there we go, paint it in right over here. Because we do have a lot to remove. We've got to remove that guy's legs. We've got to remove some of this sporting equipment. We've got to remove her legs. And we've got to bring this wall back up as well. OK. And like I said earlier, you really don't have much of an option when it comes to like, you know, things repeating. Like, obviously, I'm just clone stamping what's on the right side of the image onto the left side of this image. Like, there's, you know, there's no getting around that. That's, you know. But if you do have a pattern that looks like it repeats or something that is looking a little bit weird, 
um, then I would recommend going back over it with the clone stamp tool. All right, let's sample right over here again, and I'll just paint that in right up there. Perfect. Now, if you get rid of a person, make sure you get rid of their shadow too, or else it's going to look incredibly weird, and someone will put your image on photoshopdisasters.com, which is pretty much the one thing you do not want to happen. If your image does end up on Photoshop Disasters, please do not link to flern.com, because <laughs> I didn't teach you to do that. I taught you to get rid of the shadows if you get rid of the person. All right, here we go. Let's get rid of her shadow as well. And we're almost there. So this sort of thing can be a bit tedious, guys. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. I mean, you've been watching me clone snap now for 10 minutes or so, and you're probably starting to realize that yourself. Wow, this thing is kind of tedious. Um, but it can make a really big difference, especially if you do, you know, if your end goal is to get your subject, you know, really standing out from the background, um, you know, being like, more like a portrait than just a, a vent or whatever, then you can in fact remove the people from your background. And there are mel many, many reasons why you would want to do this. All right, let's clone stamp this guy out. He's got a, a shoe there that needs to go away. And clone stamp from the inside here. So you can see now I'm using a small brush and just kind of going over the same area over and over again. It's, we don't have a lot of detail there, it's just shadow. So it's okay if that repeats kind of over and over again. There we go. And now we'll just sample right over here again and get rid of, so this whole shadow and everything that's from this other guy who's standing behind our squad champion. All right, and again, we're gonna go ahead and cover up uh, just a little bit. I'm not worried about stopping where, where this guy is. We can go ahead and continue on over top of him. All right, so let's sample there, and let's see. This line is obviously too, way too far down. So we'll sample here and paint this back in to the right area there. All right, and we're gonna paint all the way up there. Looking pretty good. There's a shoe we need to take care of right back there. All right, and other than that, I think we are good to go, looking pretty good. So let's shift click all those, hit Command G, and here's our before and the after. Now, how do we get rid of the area where it actually like came over top of some of these people? Not really that at heart, where it came over top of our main character. We're gonna make that invisible once more, and I'm gonna use my lasso tool. Now, we can use the lasso tool here because it's something that doesn't have to be incredibly precise. Fabric has waves in it and things like that, so if you're using your hand and you're kind of creating those little waves with like your hands just kind of shaking, that's totally okay. If you were cutting out something like a car, which has like beautiful sleek curves, you'd want to use the pen tool because you don't want your hands shaking to make the car look like it's got dents and ripples and things like that. But with fabric, it's totally okay. So use the lasso tool. Let's just make that invisible, invisible again so I can see, you know, I don't need to cut his head out. We're just gonna start right about here. Come right over here along this belt. There we go. Now, I've been using the lasso tool for many years. You guys do not have to make it perfect your first go round. If you get to a place and you're like, you know, you make like a little bit of an error, I'll just make an error right there so we can, I'll show you how to fix that. Even though in real life, I actually never make errors. <laughs> no, that's not true at all. I mess up all the time. All right, let's grab his shorts up here. There we go. And kind of Go up and around there. There we go. And we'll select that area out there. So let's pretend like we didn't see that. That was just like, oh, I didn't see that or something like that. You could just hold down the shift key, which is going to add to your selection. So lasso tool, hold down the shift key, and we're just gonna make this area and kind of come out and connect it right down there and come out, out there. Now let's say you did like, you went outside of in, instead of inside, hold down the Alt or the Option key, and then you can do the same thing, and that's going to minus that area from your selection. There we go. Cool, nice easy way to fix it if you didn't get it perfect on your first go. Click there, and all we have to do now is click on our layer mask. It's the invert of what we want. We can see we've got some like weirdness going on here. So click on the layer mask now, and hit Command-I, and that is going to make sure that it did exactly what 
you wanted it to do. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now let's just be sure that you know some of these areas are, we need to just go in here and clean up a couple of these little things. I didn't, um, I didn't obviously select out this area of his leg, so we're gonna select that out. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and we're gonna select that out as well. Now here on my layer mask, I'm gonna hit shift delete and fill that with black. So it's gonna be sure that, you know, that actually does not show up there. Okay, and then we've got like a weird little area where I guess I wasn't sure if that's his pocket or the other guy or whatever. So what we're gonna do is here on a new layer, we're just gonna grab our clone stamp tool and I'm gonna sample right there and we're just gonna paint that right over there. And it's gonna automatically stop where it cuts, gets to him because we've already defined this using that layer mask. All right, very cool. So we've clone stamped everything out and then we went ahead and just masked everything at the exact same time. And yeah, looks great, big guy. All right, now just for fun, we're gonna create a new layer. I'm going to grab a clone stamp tool and we're gonna sample right over there and uh, we're gonna make it look like he's lifting a lot more weight. <laughs> it's gonna be ridiculous and awesome at the same time. So clone stamp over there, just like paint over the top, over to the left. We're just gonna lower the opacity and bring that right about there. Let's bring that back in, put a layer mask on that layer and then paint black on the layer mask so they can kind of blend in right there. It's like, wow, that was way easier to do than I thought it would be. See, some things are incredibly easy to do in Photoshop. That's, it's all about finding that balance, the easy things that are still really cool. And this is one of those, making it look like he's lifting a lot more weight. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Let's create a new layer, clone stamp from here. Just grab this, paint over. Just make sure you fill in the whole area. There we go. Looking pretty good. Let's move this over to the left. I don't know, maybe he's supposed to get, let's lower the opacity again. All right put a layer mask on there, and then paint black on your layer mask. Just to make sure that blends in. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Good job, bud. <laughs> now we can see why he's squealing with pain, because it's 10,000 pounds. All right. Awesome, and there we've got our guy, Rack City, going on. So here is our before with everyone in the background and the after. Getting rid of a lot of people, doing it incredibly well and precisely, even when we have a varied textured background. Guys, thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I wanna see your images. If you've removed anyone from a background, leave the before and the after in a comment down below. I'd love to see it. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you later. I'll do it. I'll flirt you later. What? You don't think I can? I will. See if you don't watch another one of these videos. You'll be flirted later. That's how we say it. That's how we do it. That's what it is. That's what I'm dropping. Are you picking it up? Because I'm dropping it.